In this video, we'll do a few iterations of the bisection method of root finding to show you how the algorithm works. The emphasis of this video is on understanding the process. We'll use MATLAB primarily as a calculator and to plot some stuff, but we won't be writing our own implementation of the bisection method here. We want to find the positive value of x, which satisfies the equation ln x squared equals 0.7. This is equivalent to finding the root of the function ln x squared minus 7 equals 0, or 0.7 minus ln x squared equals 0. We first want to estimate the root graphically, then perform three iterations of the bisection method. This table contains a list of quantities we need during each iteration of the bisection method. The last two columns are the percent relative error and the absolute error, which are given by these formulas down here. Note that the percent relative error for the first iteration doesn't exist because the formula requires the previous iteration's root, which we don't have. Before we start filling out this table, let's plot the function in root finding form. Here we are in MATLAB. Like I said earlier, the goal of this video is to demonstrate the bisection method manually, so this script is pretty simple. Here I've defined the function we want to solve. Note that this is a range in f of x equals 0 form. I also have the true value of the root from the problem statement. In lines 10 to 14, I have variables representing the iteration number, the lower boundary of the interval, the upper boundary of the interval, the estimated root for each iteration, and the value of the root from the previous iteration. I'll be continuously updating these variables as we go. In lines 16 through 18, I evaluate the function at the lower boundary, the upper boundary, and at the root estimate. I then compute both error metrics. Lines 21 to 32 are just plotting and printing stuff to the command window, so there's really nothing to see here. As you can see, I tried to use MATLAB only to number crunch and to plot things. Before we get started filling out the table in the problem statement, we should verify that the provided initial guesses are valid. The bisection method is an application of the intermediate value theorem, which states that the root occurs when the function goes from positive to negative or negative to positive. Therefore, the signs of f of xl and f of xu must be different to guarantee that the root occurs within the interval xl to xu. I'm going to place a breakpoint on line 13 just so we can execute the lines declaring the anonymous function and both initial guesses. Let's plug in xl and xu into the function and see if we get one positive and one negative value. We get f of xl is negative, and f of xu is positive, so the initial guesses are valid. You should always check this, otherwise the bisection method will not work. We should also calculate the max number of iterations required to reach a certain true error. Part c of the problem statement says we desire a true error of 0.05. This means that the difference between the true root and the root produced by the bisection method must differ by no more than 0.05. We can refer to the formula from the bisection method video. We know that xl equals 0.5, xu equals 2, and et equals 0.05, so we can plug them into the formula to get an upper bound on n. This means it will take at most 5 iterations until we receive a true error of 0.05 or less. This is an upper bound, so there's a chance we could get this error in fewer iterations. Keep in mind that we have to round up to the nearest integer since there's no such thing as a fraction of an iteration, hence the use of the seal command. Okay, with all of that out of the way, let's get started with the first iteration. The lower guess is 0.5 and the upper guess is 2. These are already set in MATLAB. The command window displays the remaining table values. Keep in mind that EA for the first iteration is non-existent, so I hard-coded NAN into the XR old variable just for this iteration to reflect that. Let's take a look at the plot. We can clearly see the lower guess, the upper guess, and the root estimate in the middle. We now have two subintervals, one from xl to xr, and the other from xr to xu. 
the root lies within the subinterval which contains the sign change. That means we can discard the interval from xl to xr and only focus on the subinterval from xr to xu. In the next iteration, xr will become xl and xu will stay the same. This is evident in the table as well. f of xu and f of xr have opposite signs, so we know that the subinterval from xr to xu will be retained in the next iteration and xr will become the new xl. You can actually use the table to do the entire problem, but it's easier to be assisted with the plot. I'm going to reflect these changes in the MATLAB code so we can compute the values for the second iteration. The new value of the root is 1.625, which lies halfway between xl equals 1.25 and xu equals 2. In the first iteration, we obtained xr equals 1.25, so the percent relative error is a little over 23%. The true error actually increased compared to the first iteration, but this is normal since the root can lie anywhere within the bracketing interval. If we examine the plot, it just so happens that the root lies relatively far away from xr, but if you go back to the plot of the first iteration, the root happens to lie pretty close to xr. Over time, the true error dwindles because the bracketing interval becomes so small, but it's normal for the true error to fluctuate. Once again, we now have two subintervals. We need to keep the subinterval from xl to xr because it contains the sign change and therefore the root. In the next iteration, xl will stay the same, but xr will become xu. Once again, our new xr lies halfway in between the xl and xu values. We can see that the percent relative error is approximately half of what it once was. This aligns with the theory behind the bisection method. Our true error is about 0.02, which is under the 0.05 threshold we specified in part c of the problem statement. We predicted that we will attain this error in at most five iterations. This is only the third iteration, so we ended up doing better than our prediction. If we were to continue doing more iterations, xl would stay the same, and xr would become the new xu. The problem only wants us to do three iterations, so we can stop here. To conclude, we plotted the function and did three steps of the bisection method, more or less manually, to illustrate its mechanics. I hope this gave you a better look into how the bisection method operates. See you next time.